professor thank you very much sir first of all extend my heartfelt thanks to dr bansi and the team and also to dr bansi again for allotting me this topic very important topic pioglitazone we all have heard about very important molecules and the various mechanism of action of these molecules and i think they were all boring sorry to say but our chairpersons not taking much interest <laughs> dr makar please please look at this talk so i'll take you through the various agendas regarding this and then i will not talk anything about this prevalence of diabetes because we hear number of times at least 100 times in one conference but this is a very important slide which represents the various components of the ominous octet in type 2 diabetes pathophysiology and the pathway of action and if you look on the left side decreased glucose uptake and the drug which takes care of the resistance metformin thiazolidine dione's so coming to the thiazolidine dione's very important is the pioglitazone and then increased hepatic glucose production again the thiazolidine dione's and increased lipolysis so these three components in the pathophysiology they are really very important are being looked after by the pioglitazone it is an anti hyperglycemic agent introduced in the year 1999 for the treatment of type 2 diabetes and is the main thiazolidine dione position in treatment guidelines typically recommended as third line therapy i don't know why whenever we suspect in type 2 diabetes that this patient has insulin deficiency as well as the insulin resistance looking at the patient proper selection of the patient is very important and there we should think of the second line also not third line preferred when prominent insulin resistance and the hypoglycemia risk is there and there are various clinical trials they have shown that it should be considered the mechanism of action is by ppar activation primary target is the nuclear receptor highly expressed in the adipo tissues and also present in the pancreatic beta cells vascular endothelium and the macrophages and the secondary target are primarily expressed in the liver heart and the skeletal muscles and this is a very complex mechanism of action which i will i will not talk about but the other mechanism of action which are very very important the gene transcription modulation it leads to the heterodimerization with the retinoid x receptor and the complex binds to peroxis peroxisome proliferator response elements in dna regulates transcription of the numerous gene involved in the glucose metabolism lipid metabolism inflammation and the cell differentiation and the effect on adipose tissues promotes adipose site differentiation insulin sensitization in the skeletal muscles so these are the three other mechanism of action and then the cellular mechanism like the molecular signaling pathways the anti inflammatory action is suppresses the nfk beta signaling in the multiple tissues reduces circulating inflammatory markers modulates macrophage polarization towards the m2 phenotype and then there is metabolic flexibility now there are various factors affecting the pioglitazone use and we all must consider these important factors and they are concomitant use of pioglitazone and pregabalin may enhance edema so be careful when using for the diabetic neuropathy and the use of aspirin with pioglitazone may increase the hypoglycemic effect of pioglitazone selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor may enhance the glucose lowering effect of pioglitazone and use of pioglitazone with a thiazide or a thiazide like diuretic may decrease the glucose lowering effect of pioglitazone use of pioglitazone with topimerate may result in decreased serum concentration and by decreasing the insulin resistance pioglitazone may cause ovulation in pre mesom pre menopausal women with unovulation especially in polycystic ovarian syndrome so these unovulatory female patients may get pregnant with the resumption of ovulation so before starting this drug give little consideration to all these factors and when we talk of the clinical efficacy glycemic control in primary outcome analysis of 16 studies the pioglitazone monotherapy reduced hp1c by 0.5% with no significant difference and from secondary outcome analysis the effect of pioglitazone treatment was observed to be associated with decreased fasting plasma sugar plasma sugar 
significant by 0.24 millimole per liter. Now coming beyond glycemic control, what are the various pleiotropic effects? You see that decreased incident Parkinson's disease, beneficial anti-inflammatory effect in patients with multiple sclerosis, improved lipid profile, especially decreased triglyceride and increased SDLC, which is very, very important. Increase anti-inflammatory and anti-thrombotic action and the inhibitory effect on the AZ's levels. Visceral fat is decreased. There is a positive effect in reduction of the metabolic parameters. Increase subcutaneous fat. And increase insulin resistance and hyperandrogenomia in PCOS. Increase ovulation rate and menstrual cy cyclicity in the PCOS. Induced ovulation, increase SHBG, TT and FT and decrease hirsutism and acne. There is increased adipone actin, imposed improved insulin sensitivity, enhanced oxidation of fatty acids, stabilization of beta cell functions, increased effect on insulin, may ameliorate metabolic complications, and then look here, which is the most important at the liver, decreased glucose production, reduced content of the circulating fatty acids and triglycerides, decreased intrahepatic fat accumulation, improved insulin sensitivity, normalization of the ALT levels, and the reduced hepatic Steatosis, and I'll tell you further how important are all these. ADA 2024 guidelines, pioglitazone highlights, approved for type 2 diabetes as an adjunct to diet and exercise, and considered for patients with insulin resistance and when other medications fail. But why other medications fail? Why not to start it when there is a significant resistance? Start it as the first line. Reduces HPLC by 0.5 to 1.4 percent as monotherapy. Improves insulin sensitivity and lipid profile. Effective in lowering fasting glucose levels in patients with impaired glucose tolerance. And beneficial in patients at risk of hypoglycemia or with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. The RSSDI 2022 guidelines. Improves glycemic control. Enhances insulin sensitivity. Provides cardiovascular benefit including the reduced risk of Heart failure may help manage weight in overweight or the obese patients. Effective as adult therapy when first-line agents fail to achieve glycemic targets. And it exerts pleiotropic effect beyond glycemic control already discussed, improving overall metabolic health of the patient. But there are certain controversies surrounding pioglitazone. Bladder cancer risk. Mixed evidence on association with bladder cancer. FDA issued a black box warning. And then some studies suggest low absolute risk while others indicate increased risk with the prolonged use. Then heart failure concern. Initial trial showed increased hospitalization for heart failure, especially in at-risk patients. And the recent studies indicate potential safety in low-risk population with careful monitoring. Then associated with significant weight gain and fluid retention, complicating diabetes management, which limits its use as a first-line treatment. This is how we are not using it. But carefully, if we select the patient and carefully use this drug, it is really wonderful. The regulatory responses were very responsive globally, banned in India, but later reinstated due to insufficient evidence of harm compared to benefits. Continued marketing allowed by FDA and EMA despite safety concerns, ongoing monitoring and studies are required. And there was also another issue behind this which cannot be discussed on this platform. When we talk of the cardiovascular outcomes, proactive, prospective pioglitazone clinical trial in macrovascular events. And we see that HbA1c median change from the baseline to final trial visit, you can see here. And it reduces the composite of all cause mortality, non fatal MI, and stroke in patients with type 2 diabetes who have a high risk of macrovascular events. IRIS insulin resistant intervention after stroke trial, the very important trial, IRIS trial, where pioglitazone up to 40 milligram, 5 milligram per day was used. It was initiated in February 2025, 3,876 patients. And you see that in patients with diabetes enrolled into the placebo control proactive trial, pioglitazone was associated with encouraging macrovascular outcomes. And the IRIS trial compared pioglitazone with placebo in patients with insulin resistance and a history of cerebrovascular disease. Pioglitazone was associated with significant reduction in incidence of stroke or MI versus the placebo. 
and significantly fewer patients progressing to diabetes. Then coming to NASH, non-alcoholic state of hepatitis, it may improve NASH histology other than fibrosis, which you can see her primary outcome, steatosis improvement, fibrosis improvement, lobar, lobular inflammation, hepatocellular ballooning, and the resolution of the NASH, which you can see the dark red line, maroon line, maroon bar is of the pioglitazone. The outcome in NASH, 55 patients with pre-diabetes or type 2 diabetes in biopsy confirmed NASH pioglitazone, 45 milligram versus placebo, improved aminotransferase levels, decreased hepatic fat content, histologic improvement in steatosis and inflammation, and non-significant trend towards fibrosis reduction. And the two to 36 month long-term efficacy was 101 patients with pre-diabetes or diabetes in biopsy proven NASH, 18 months randomized trial results were significant NASH resolution, improved histological scores including fibrosis, benefits persisted throughout the addition and the differential efficacy in diabetes versus pre-diabetes, potential more effective in patients with diabetes, greater reduction in liver fibrosis in diabetic patients, and increased adipose tissue insulin sensitivity in diabetic patients compared to pre-diabetic patients. So whenever we use this drug for NASH, a regular follow-up of the patient is required, and we have to be very, very careful regarding the fluid detection. The summary of ASLD and EST, ESL, ESO management guidelines for NASH lifestyle, 7 to 10% weight loss, 500 to 1,000 daily calorie reduction exercise, pharmacology, pioglitazone, and vitamin E. Vitamin E comes after pioglitazone, then comes the bariatric surgery and the liver transplant. This is the real crux, the attributes that make pioglitazone attractive. An inexpensive generic drug is also available. Lower A1C as much as any oral drug. Causes no significant hypoglycemia as monotherapy. Has been used for a long time. No surprise is expected since 1999. Easy to use, one pill once a day. Can be combined with any other therapy. The responsiveness is very durable over the years. Has a beneficial effect on lipids, improves SDL, triglycerides and LDL. Beneficial effect on markers of CVD, beneficial impact on CVD outcome, beneficial effect on beta cell function, and effective even in patients with a low EGFR. Despite the earlier controversies, recent studies have suggested careful monitoring and caution while using pioglitazone in terms of bladder cancer risk in patients with heart failure concerns. Continued marketing was granted by FDA, EMA, and, and DCGI despite safety concerns, ongoing monitoring and studies are required. So now let us take up the question. But before that, I would like to take you to Delhi. 52nd Annual Conference of Research Society for the Study of Diabetes in India. And this full house should be happy to see our organizing chair, Dr. Briz Makkar here, sitting, chairing these sessions. Our vice president of RSSDI, Dr. L. Srinivas Murthy. Our past president of RSSDI, Dr. BM, Dr. Bansi Sabu. Our EC member, Dr. N.K. Singh, and immediate past chair of RSSTI, Delhi chapter, who is conducting this conference, Dr. Meena Chabra. So on behalf of all of them, I invite you all to come to Delhi from 14th to 17th of November 2024. Enjoy the feast and the academic feast. Dr. Meena is saying something. She says, please get your Spouses registered also for, because we have very good activities for the spouses also. And this conference is with the IDF Southeast Asia region. They have also been in, invited and involved into this. And President of International Diabetes Federation, Dr. Peter Swartz himself is coming there for four days to interact with all of us. So with that, I finish and thank you everyone.